Yeah, I'll go ahead and get started. This is called Silly Animal, and this is going to be really quick. So I'm just going to tell you whenever I get started here, right about y'all. Uh, okay. Yeah, this isn't too quick, huh? <laughs> yeah, I was cat sitting for a neighbor just about a few weeks ago, and one of the things that wound up happening is every time I'd go in there, it would be very surprising, like there'd be these chewed up wires or something, and then occasionally what it would do is it would knock over stuff, and sometimes it would poop in the floor. And it got me thinking about the way that human beings are, the way that human beings are unlike animals. Animals interact with the world more or less as it's presented to them, but human beings, we can mentally construct our reality because our thoughts, our plans, our intentions, our hopes, our dreams can make new worlds possible that you wouldn't otherwise find in environments. And you can see that if you just take a look at the world map, whenever you look at national boundaries, those aren't there in the world, economic systems aren't there in the world, but thanks to human beings, because of the creativity of the animal that we are, after being here for about 75,000 years, we've been able to do things like this to make national boundaries, and it's the reason why immigration can be a problem and there can be such a thing as a financial crisis. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about some of the things that we've done and some of the changes that we've brought about. Now, if you look here, it's kind of hard to see, but the Pleistocene is about 200, two and a half million years ago to about 10,000 years ago. And the Holocene era is about 10,000 years ago to about 1750. 1750 is the beginning of the Anthropocene. This is what's called the Age of Man, the geoscientists call it, which is really kind of amazing. There's a new geological era that's pinned just for us. Now, we've brought about so many changes to the environment that by 2060, according to Paul Critzen, the Nobel Prize winning chemist, it might wind up looking like this, like it looked about 50 million years ago, whenever alligators swim around Antarctica. And hopefully we won't modify the environment to look quite like this, but things are bad. Because by 2050, it's predicted that there's going to be more plastic in the ocean than there are fish. There are these islands that are you can find all over in the oceans, and we brought this about. And it's because of what we do with our garbage. We're a very smart animal, but we also do silly things like this. The garbage never goes away, and we generate it by doing things like this, like by taking a banana and then wrapping a banana in plastic, and then you take that piece of plastic, and then you go put that in the garbage, and then that winds up in a landfill somewhere, or it might wind up in another place, which is unfortunate. It might wind up, say, in a seabird's stomach. And one of the things that you'll see here is the plastic that's all found inside of a seabird. Yeah, it has plenty of things to pick from, from the seas as they've been more or less taken over by plastic. So even worse than that, whenever we create heavy industries to make our lives better, to make things run better, you create all kinds of bad situations like this in China. Now every year, about 4,400 Chinese people die because of smog, and it's just considered the price of doing business. Uh, that's unfortunate, and hopefully you could do things to regulate that. One thing that's being done is there are caps that are put on carbon emissions, and that's a good step. There was also the UN Climate Change Conference that was held at the end of last year, and there have been good measures there. However, if you look in the United States, the Supreme Court is already shutting down some of those regulations, so that's unfortunate, and it might mean that people are going to have to get together and do something about it. If people don't get together, then we won't have a future. Now, it's very common for us to think of ourselves in this great chain of being view that we're just a little bit less than angels and we're better than, say, an insect. And this kind of thinking, even if you're not religious, kind of pervades everyday thinking. Because, for example, there's this effort to teach apes how to speak English, say, or a natural language, which is really foolish because we don't learn bee communication, right? Bees do this nice little jig whenever they see a flower, they see the nectar there, but there's no effort for us to learn this. We don't have any reason to do this. It just goes to show you the ways in which we're continuous with the other animals, and we don't need to see that, but we do need to consider our humanity. Now, it's not that animals are somehow less evolved than human beings are, or that we're somehow more evolved. We're just evolved differently. And it's not that some people are more evolved, but it is the case that from our own point of view, we can fairly say that we have some better angels of our nature, and then we also have some demons. Whenever you come in to a city in an airplane, you can get to see a nice view like this. And we've been able to reshape this world in our mind's eye for the better and for the worse. 
we so completely transformed the environment that we're using about one third of the world's drinking water, which is a nice thing for us. But if we want to be able to preserve the environment, be able to preserve the world for future generations, we will probably have to begin to make some changes because probably we would like for not only our own survival, but the survival of our children, our grandchildren, and so on. Um, now, let me go ahead and show you this next picture, which is going to be coming up right y'all. Yeah, here's a picture in 2006, and this was taken in Iceland. These protesters got together and they got angry about the banks, and then they jailed a lot of the bankers and they let the businesses fail. Uh, that was good for them. They had a nice recovery in their economy as a result of that, and it's because people got together to protest because they were angry about something. Now, you might say, oh, Brother Billy, I don't give a crawdad's <laughs> back about protesting. But the African-American Civil Rights Movement was very helpful. So because of these changes in the 1960s, you had changes in the law in 61 and 63, and you would not have had LBJ push that legislation unless there were things like these marches. And you can also see other kinds of changes, like fairly recently with the LGBTQ movement, and it was because of people getting together and organizing and protesting that you began to see changes in the way that legislation is passed. You began to see the Supreme Court decision and there's way more tolerance of alternative lifestyles as a result of people getting together and protesting, doing things like this. And this is still our planet, all of ours, and we want to be around for as long as possible. And there are several people out there in the world who do seem to be almost completely insane and then trying to do something where they are not going to preserve the future for us. And you know the people that I'm talking about. You've seen them before in all the news and major media. Uh, guys like this. So, so one thing that's clear, and I'm not a very political person, but these people deny climate change, or they say that it's happening and we can't do anything about it. I just look at them and I think, oh, oh silly animal. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much.